Welcome to Conversations with Leaders in Luxury. I'm Chris Olshin, Chief Executive Officer of the Luxury Marketing Council. Since 1994, 1,000 luxury brands, 5,000 CEOs and CMOs in 40 cities worldwide. Today I have the pleasure to be with Gabriel Shalulian, Founder and Chairman and President of Blue Fountain Media, a New York digital agency. Gabe, it's uh, great to see you. Pleasure to have Thank you, you here. Thanks. Um, so welcome to our series, and why don't we start with some background on you. Um, New York kid originally? Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, grew up in Long Island. Okay. And uh, went to university right here in New York, went to NYU, and ended up staying here. So I guess a New York person. Makes sense. Um, so tell me a little bit about what got you into the digital agency world and how you got involved with technology the way you have. Yeah, you know, it's a funny story because when I went to college, um, few people were using email. It wasn't used in the business world or in the personal sense. Some university kids were using it. And uh, I knew I was, I was pre-med in college. And okay. I came up with this idea to teach kids about biology through characters. And I tried to get into the entertainment world with that uh, through a project called BioWars that I'm still trying for today. I was reading about that. We can talk about that in a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but that got me to learn Photoshop. And Photoshop opened my eyes to the brand new world of the web. Now, keep in mind, we're going back to 1995. When modems were 14.4K, <laughs> and it took about 10 minutes to download a picture on the web. The I wonderful mean, world of dial-up. That's right, an AOL, and you're being charged for every penny. But it was exciting. For the first time, you could see content from some, somebody else anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. And I thought this would be a magical thing. I didn't know how. And I remember Prodigy was out then as well. Mm -hmm. They were talking about they were going to do e-commerce online. You could buy things online. And it seemed like a futuristic world, very exciting. And um, I just knew I wanted to be part of it. So I went back to NYU to get a master's in multimedia, and I started as a freelance designer uh, doing, web, doing designing websites. And I got to tell you, it was a lot of fun. And that's what, kind of late 90s, late 90s, 98, 99? That's right. OK, so that's right around when the dot-com bubble sort of happened. Yes, and you know, it didn't make sense because I was part of those companies, and uh, I just didn't understand the evaluations because nobody was selling anything. There were no transactions. It was too new and too ahead of its time. It sounds like social media today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully, you have more of a grasp on that today. <laughs> okay, so uh, mid '90s, you're freelancing, right. and then dot-com bubble hits. A lot of the major brands go out of business. Yes, I uh, got a job with a. Uh, company and uh, software, online software company. And then the dot-com bubble kind of burst. I went out on my own. I mean, talk about good timing, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, as we all know, you know, great things come out of sometimes some of the ashes. So sure. I knew that the website was not a fad. A lot of people said, oh, well, that came and went. You know, we knew it's going to happen. But I knew that this was going to change how businesses communicate with each other and with their consumers. And uh, I thought a website actually was a lot of fun to make. So I went and I created this company, small company called Gabriel Productions. Okay. And that was back in like 2001. All right. So started as a freelancer and then right. assuming obviously you took off, you wound up with some great clients. Um, what kind of got you from starting off with Gabriel Productions to I guess Blue Fountain came to be about 2005? That's right. Uh, with Gabe Productions, I start knocking on doors, doing sales the old-fashioned way. Like, literally going from door to door and saying, hi, you want a website? Um, landed, a f my first client was Cutler Salon. Okay. Uh, my first official client under Gable Productions name. I had worked with some other very large companies with other companies, but this was my first client for Gable Productions. And charged them $5,000 for an amazing site. My goal was to just make an incredible portfolio. And uh, I didn't care about how much I charge. You need to, when you're starting out, you need to get something under your wing. Sure. And end up making them what I consider to be one of the best, uh, flashiest uh, sites on the web. You know, I worked, I made nothing on this. I made peanuts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was like $10 an hour. But I didn't care about that. Uh, I cared about adding something great. And they had one of the most amazing Flash sites. If you remember back then, Flash. Oh, yeah, Flash was huge until was, Google really started taking over. Yeah, Apple kind of demolished it when they said we're not, our Safaris will not support Flash anymore. But during then, Flash was all the rave. Yep. And made them a great site. They were getting a lot of recognition for the site. And I started getting referrals. Now, my goal was to have like a three or four man team. Until mm -hmm. one morning you wake up, 
and I, real, I woke up one morning actually, and I realized I have 17 guys I'm paying that's working with me. Oh, wow. And it had grown, I, it, I don't know, it just kind of hit me. I was like, uh, okay, this was such a small operation. Today we have, we now have 10 clients. There is no sales team, there's no management team. And I had to make a decision then, well, do I move forward and create a company and make people full-time, which as you know, that brings a whole set of new overhead and everything yeah, like absolutely. that with it, or do I scale back and stay very boutique and small? And I said, well, I'm gonna go for it. And uh, that brought on many years of hardship. <laughs> <laughs> Ups and downs, and, but I changed the name to Blue Fountain Media because one, wasn't about me anymore. Right. It was about a team. And two, I wanted a, uh, a corporate name that would give an azure feeling to clients. Like, you know, Blue Fountain Media, we spring ideas to life. Also that people had a lot of anxiety when they were towards the web during that period of time. Mm -hmm. And we want to let them know you're in good hands. We're going to take care of you. We understand how to grow a business online, and that's what we're here for. Great. So 2005, Blue Fountain Media started. Um, obviously, you guys have been a, a big success since. Um, when did you kind of realize you've really gotten, gotten to a point that you have a, a juggernaut of a business on your hands? You know, I think when you're leading a company and you're responsible for payroll, you always have some form of anxiety and paranoia. You never understand that. You never like stop and say, hey, we're kind of successful. Like when we hit 100 full-time employees, I still didn't feel like I'm there or that we're successful because you know that in your service business, you should always, like, you're at the whim of your client's mercy. Like, sure. you know, you have to go above and beyond for them at all times. At the same time, your employees are your most important assets. You gotta make sure you're pleasing them. So we're always dealing with challenges and I never gonna stop to say, oh, we made it, oh, we're successful. Even last few months ago, we merged with a uh, global company called Pactera. Yep. Still don't think we're there yet. I, I, you know, you, you want to be there when you are a recognized, respected brand name that people know. And I think we're getting closer, but still not there. Okay. Um, let's talk clients for a minute. So uh, care to name drop a little bit? Tell us some of the, the clients you've worked with in the last few years that sure. our members would recognize. Sure, of course. Uh, you know, we work with Toys R Us. We work with Sh uh, Sharp. We work with... Uh, Procter & Gamble, we've done projects with the NFL and the Green Bay Packers. It's, you know, we've done the Wallops logo for NASA. Uh, and we've also worked with a lot of mid-sized and startup companies. And, uh, you know, any company you work with, how we separate ourselves is that we're not just focused on doing creative work, but we're also focused on doing work that generates results for our clients. Our clients want to measure, hey, um, what is my return in terms of uh, when we're doing a website or marketing, time on site, not just to sell, but a repeat client, the value of a long lasting uh, client versus a one time client. So they're looking at numbers when they come to us and that's what we deliver on. It's the results. Which is great. I think that's one of the biggest challenges in the digital industry is measuring results and finding a company that actually can give you real numbers so absolutely and also a company that stays on top of trends i mean one of the most difficult things about our industry is that the rules of marketing are constantly changing for example seo how to get to the top of google for certain key terms every year that those you know google is getting better and better at picking the right types of searches that come up for people mm -hmm. but that changes the rules as to how you get up there Paid media is constantly changing, and now it's emerging with offline media. So, for example, you could do billboard, billboard buys that are digital for just an hour a day. So you're, we have to have our team constantly on top of trends, and we invest now 20% of time on training. Okay. Um, well, I guess on the subject of trends, uh, in addition to Blue Fountain Media, you're also a, a well-known author. Um, and you, you blog and, and write <laughs> for the Times and Huffington Post and Forbes. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about what topics you cover and why you decided to start writing as often as you do. Well, thank you, um, and thanks for the compliment. Of course. <laughs> so, I believe that for any company to be a leader in the field, they have to invest in content marketing, thought leadership pieces. And what I'm doing is no different than what Ogilvy said. He said, give away the knowledge. So we talk about, uh, I should say that uh, when we do, it's not just myself and my team involved, when we do blogs and columns, the latest trends in digital marketing, 
the latest trends in strategy, design, planning, whatever it is that we do, we try to share our knowledge with, with the people out there. Uh, it helps us. It helps rank our website. It's why it ranks on Google. It's because we have such a strong leadership. People come to our blog. We have over 100,000 followers in our blog, in our industry. Uh, but you have to put out quality content. Mm -hmm. And if you want your brand to stand out as a leader, you need to do this. I recommend to any brand or any startup that is looking to be respected in their industry. You have to give away thought pieces. Okay. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about one of your favorite clients, the Luxury Marketing Council. Yes. Um, as most of our members know, the, the website's just recently been redesigned by you guys. It looks absolutely gorgeous. You. And um, you, you guys really did an amazing job of taking what was in Greg's head and my head and without much direction, making it real. Uh, which is something we've had a challenge having happen up until this point. Um, what are some of the, I mean, I could talk about the site all day, but I'd <laughs> rather have the expert do it. Uh, what are some of the things in the site that are cutting edge, modern, that hopefully will drive more value uh, to a community like ours? Well, first I want to thank you because you actually did spend the time on it with us. And I think collaboration is a key point to making any digital exercise a success. You, it's a two, it, there's two parties involved. It's not just us as the agency side, it's also the clients and the client's commitment to making a success. And you were very helpful to us as we went through the strategy of saying, well, what is a value proposition? What's the look and feel we're looking for? And the messaging and the value distinction here. So after working with you, we realized there were certain key things we want to take away. One, we want the site to feel like luxury. Mm -hmm. Not like a corporate B2B site, but more of an experience. So using some dynamic HTML5 animation, using images properly, uh, not too heavy on the text, you know, more concise messaging, all those working together I think helped us create a site that feels like the brand. Yeah, um, I, you guys also did our invites that we've noticed a major uptick in response since changing the format of our invitations as well. So. That's been absolutely brilliant, and thank you for that. No, of course, and that was easy to do. You had the content, all we had to do was reformat it, so it was an easier read as your eyes scrolled down. Great, um, so why don't we talk a little bit about the market and the customer? Um, obviously, digital has been flipped on its head in the last 18 years since it really hit the, hit the market in the late 90s. How is the market changing? How are the customers changing? What are their demand? How are their demands different from what they were 20 years ago to today? Yeah, you know, um, I think brands are constantly struggling with this. How do we engage clients? How do we keep them engaged with our brands? And there are more and more touch points today that you could in, you could uh, communicate with your clients. There's social media, of course, but. You have to understand, it doesn't start in one channel or another. It doesn't start just in the offline store and end there, or it start in the social media and end there. You need to have an omni-channel integrated marketing campaign. So from the time the client comes to your site or to your store, how are you going to engage them? You have to know, first of all, who your clients are. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Some luxury hotels do a very nice job at this. Some jewelers might do some great job. They know who are their high-end clients they have a different messaging campaign for those clients than they do for the casual browser or the low, ending, the low spending client. Knowing who your client is is critical. Understanding their needs and knowing how to market to them. There are numerous ways now to communicate with clients. And you can't use one platform, one method for all clients. Having email marketing campaign that is segregated by needs, by interest, by spending habits, numerous factors mm -hmm. is important to have if you want to make it successful. Okay. Um, leaving the business side, uh, I saw on Wiki that you've created a comic book as well as a number of video game apps. Um, I <laughs> want to dive into that uh, for a little bit just because yeah. one of the questions we always ask is what's your personal definition of luxury? And before I ask that, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about this because we've talked about, you know, is there a play for an app? And are there other avenues we could be exploring to kind of bring the community together outside of the typical and traditional business models? And it seems like this could be one that, that works really well for you. Yeah, I mean, for uh, this was a side project for BioWars that created a comic book and uh, 
apps for, you know, getting a book uh, or any property into children's market is very challenging. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm slowly starting to get out on my own right now. And this is a hobby on the side. In terms of businesses doing apps, even for the Luxury Marketing Council, we have to remember that apps are something that need to provide value on a daily, if not weekly basis, because they do take up a desktop yep. on the mobile smartphone. So we should first know how people are going to use this app. Why are they going to continue to engage with it? And make sure that it stays relevant in their everyday life. Once we have that plan, then we could roll out an app. But I always believe businesses, sometimes you have startups coming to us and they say, should we roll out the app or should we roll out a website? And a website is a must. A website is a marketing tool and you have to have it. An app is something that you don't necessarily have to have. And if you do have it, you have to make sure it provides relevant value to the user, like fresh content. For example, if you have the CNN app on your uh, desktop, it's okay. You're constantly getting updates on it. Mm -hmm. I have the Bloomberg app. It's constantly, I'm checking it two or three times a day to check on stats. But apps that I don't check on constantly, after a few days, maybe a few weeks, I'll delete them from my uh, desktop. Makes sense. Um, key takeaways for our audience, if you could give them three pieces of advice on the digital marketplace and what they should be thinking about, what would they be? Uh, first rule, like I said, know your consumer. Know who they are. Know why they buy from you. Most brands, their salespeople could tell you why is it that their consumers buy from them, but their site or their marketing campaign may not, may not talk to that. Knowing who they are will help us when we do a marketing campaign or help you, the consumer that is, do a better job at targeting them. You would know who, the, you have to identify these things. You have to do a strategy and, and know this is my core niche group. This is how I'm going to go after them. You can't be everything to everybody and you don't want to be everything to everybody. You want to select who is the right audience for you and you want to sell your products or services to the right audience. Okay. Um, that to me sounds exactly like how you look at a luxury customer so far. It's right. knowing the right, the right audience. Exactly. Uh, luxury to me, I mean, just to step ahead a little bit, I define it as something that's for a niche, something special. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it's something that a select few could get their hands on to make their lives a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more better. And it's all about that niche. So I know this may seem not a luxury, but Gmail took that approach when it first came out. Yeah, I could see that. It didn't target everybody. It was for a select few, and everybody else wanted it. Mm -hmm. You know, so luxury is about making, you could define it as creating a demand that everybody else wants that the few have, or selecting a niche that a few have. Expense could be part of it. You know, a price could, that can be it, but it doesn't have to be it. You have to create that value around your brand. Sure. So what's your personal luxury? Your, and I know your definition is something that's, that's limited and could or could not be expensive, but that's rare. Right. What to you is luxury in your own On personal, personal life? Basis, I think time. Time? <laughs> something very limited. I don't get much of. Uh, but luxury to me, if I had to find my business world, honestly, finding great employees creates, I think, a sense of luxury because it gives me comfort and a peace of mind knowing that we have people that we trust to take us above and beyond. Uh, in terms of personal spending, I think uh, having time to pick, you know, catch up on technology. Sure. No, not, not very exciting. No, <laughs> but a, a great answer. Um, well, on that, that point, thank you for taking some time today to spend with me and to do this interview. Um, you know, the time you guys invested in the website was worth it and then some. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for the investment of your time and the luxury of your company. Uh, again, I'm Chris Olshin, the Chief Executive Officer of the Luxury Marketing Council, here today with Gabriel Shalulian, um, founder and president of Blue Fountain Media, a digital New York agency. Uh, please check them out online and visit LuxuryCouncil.com. Uh, with thanks, as always, to our host, NASDAQ, for today's production. Have a great day.